Let's talk about hashing. It's something that you might be vaguely familiar with, but if not, hash algorithms are used for essentially creating a signature of any type of data. It could be a string, a file, or even an ISO of an entire operating system. And it does this by summarizing them to a fixed size value that uniquely identifies its contents. And if this is something new to you, take a closer look the next time that you download a Linux ISO, as most of these distro maintainers will include a hash of the ISO in the download section for you to verify that your ISO image hasn't been tampered with. Although, this isn't always a good way to verify your ISO. Um, if the hash and the ISO are coming from the same place, well, it's fairly easy to change that as well, because if someone is going to hack a website and then upload a malicious ISO, it's really quite trivial to just upload a different hash, the hash of the malicious one, um, and then if somebody downloads that and they check the hash on their own system, they're going to get the same result, and then nobody would be none the wiser that they're actually running a malicious operating system. Now, a hash algorithm works similarly to the check digit at the end of a barcode. So the purpose of the check digit, of course, is to make sure that you typed all of the previous digits of the barcode correctly. If one single digit were to be changed, then the check digit would also have a different value. Now, a hash algorithm does this for an entire string or file, regardless of its size. And because a hash algorithm is used on much more arbitrary data than a barcode, the hash to uniquely identify this data has to be much longer than a single digit. So this is an example of a string and the hash that is produced by the MD5 uh, hashing algorithm when it's run on it. Now, in this example, the hash of the sentence that is produced by MD5 is actually longer than the sentence itself. And this is because with MD5, our hash will always be a fixed length of 32 hexadecimal digits. So it doesn't really matter whether you're hashing a single ASCII character, which would just be a few bytes in size, or an archive of an entire multi-terabyte hard drive, the length of your hash when using MD5 or really any other hashing algorithm is always going to be fixed, in this case 32 hex characters or 128-bit strings. Now, there's a lot of complex math that goes into a hashing algorithm. I have some sources in the description if you want to get more into the weeds of the math that goes into producing these, uh, but three of the operations that tend to show up in all hash functions are modular addition, bitwise logic, and multiplication by primes. These, along with many other operations, are what make up the hashing algorithms. Now, regardless of what math you use to create a hashing algorithm, a good one needs to accomplish at least four things. So hashes, they need to be a one-way function, meaning it should be impossible to reproduce the original data from the hash that the algorithm produces. There shouldn't be any way to take that 32-bit hexadecimal product and then work backwards on it to get the data that was input to produce it. And our hash algorithms need to be fast, but not too fast. And this is a common thread that we see throughout the information security world. We want things to be quick, but we also want them to be secure, especially with hashing, since we're going to be running that function on large files to verify their contents. But if things are too quick or too simple, then they become easy to break. And that's one of the reasons why we don't really use MD5 for hashing anymore. And our algorithm must have an avalanche effect. What this means is that whenever we change one bit, like literally flipping a zero to a one or vice versa of our input data, it should produce a totally different hash. And you can actually test this yourself with a hash generator. You can type out a sentence, 
uh, and then take note of the hash that it produced and then make a very basic change to it, like deleting a single character or changing the case of a single character. And you'll see that the hash of that text is going to be very different. And this goes hand in hand with the last important point, which is that the algorithm must not produce hash collisions, which is arguably the most important aspect of hashing. And a hash collision occurs when two or more different files, strings, or any arbitrary data end up producing the same hash result. Because if this happens, from the perspective of a computer or any other system that is supposed to verify something hasn't been tampered with or that two things are the same, that system is going to think that no tampering has occurred or that the two pieces of data are the same since they both have the same hashes. Now, hash collisions are technically impossible to avoid completely because there are a limited number of hashes that can ultimately be generated. Uh, with the older MD5, our hashes were 128 bits, which means that we would get uh, this long number of potential hashes that can be produced, unique hashes that can be produced. Um, but again, if there are that many or more different files in existence, different documents in existence, then there's going to be some collision. There's going to be some two files that end up having the same hash. And this is the reason why newer hashes like SHA-2 tend to produce longer digest. Um, with this example, SHA-256, it ends up producing a 256-bit hash, and then this much longer number is the number of unique hashes that can be produced. So obviously this significantly reduces the possibility that a hash is going to occur naturally. So this right here is actually an example of an MD5 hash collision. Um, and I have these two pictures linked in the description below if you want to try this out for yourself. But these two pictures are obviously very different. One is a plane that's about to crash into a field and the other is a shipwreck at the bottom of the ocean. So two different images, uh, they even have different resolutions, but below you can see that they have the same MD5 hash. And this is where the security concern comes in with hash collisions. It's bad enough for arbitrary, random pieces of data floating around out there on the internet to have the same hash, but if you can modify a document in such a way that you can change an important piece of information, say, changing the name of the person on a deed, and maybe making some cosmetic or even invisible changes to the document in such a way that your modified document produces the same hash, then you've run into a big problem, and our hash algorithm at that point is going to be considered broken. And this is why MD5 is completely broken. It's more broken than getting a blank card and Yera in the Binding of Isaac. And you should really just never use it. Arbitrary collisions have been found in MD5 as early as 2004, and security researchers have even managed to create things like a fake SSL certificate that have the same MD5 as a valid one. So bad things are going to happen if you use MD5 in any meaningful application. And to make things worse, MD5 has been used for so long by so many services on the web that the one-way function aspect of MD5 is pretty much broken as well. So if you've ever done a capture the flag event or been in any type of situation where you need to get the plain text passwords um, or a single plain text password from its hash form, then you may have thought of using something like a rainbow table or a GPU cluster to crack the hashes. But in most cases, if we're dealing with MD5, you can just use Google. You can simply copy and paste that MD5 hash into the Google search bar, and if a standard number of rounds is used and there's no salting or any additional measures taken to protect these hashes, then you're going to get a list of links to sites that 
have these pre-computed hashes stored along with their plain text. So no advanced hacking skills are required. Um, so when it comes to hashing, you really want to use an algorithm that is up to date and not broken, and ideally one that has a longer digest. Uh, right now, that would be SHA-2, which even supports digest sizes up to 512 bits, uh, which is likely not going to be broken anytime soon, uh, at least not as long as the algorithm itself doesn't have a weak point to be found because a 512 bit hash is just so, so long that we don't even have computing power that can come close to cracking it. Um, and even if SHA-2 does end up getting broken, SHA-3 is already in the process of being ratified. So if it does have a weak point found, then hopefully applications are just going to move on to adopting SHA-3. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to share it, like it, and subscribe with notifications on so you know when new videos are released. Bye now.